Hi guys, this is Emmy, and I have a little trick for you. I'm working on Gemini Solus's bus, and I thought this would be a great time to show you this. Uh, this is a really quick way to add detail, especially if, uh, detail to your inks, especially if you don't want to ink them by hand, and they're very uniform kind of details. Uh, so over here you'll notice I have three layers. I have my ink layer, which is on the top. I have my sketch layer, which is right below it. And I've turned my sketch layer's opacity down right here. I hope you guys can see this. And at the back, I have uh, just a light blue background color so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, uh, real quick, I just want to show you. If you can see this, my inks are very, very pixely, which means that they are, what's the word I'm looking for, aliased, I believe, which means they're really hard edge. So that's what you want your inks to be like and able to do some of these methods that I'm going to show you. All right, let me go back out to 100%. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer above our inks and we're just going to call it details. And then we're going to select the pencil brush or the pencil tool. And you can find this by holding down on the brush tool and selecting the pencil tool. Now, the thing that is unique about the pencil tool is that every brush that you have in your sets will be magically transformed into an aliased shape, whereas normally they would be soft or have different opacity levels and things like that. So you want all your brushes to be nice and rock hard. <laughs> I'm a pervert. <laughs> all right, so anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to our layers and double click on our details layer and that's going to open up what's called the style window and you're, depending on what version you have of Photoshop, I'm using CS4 right now, uh, you're probably going to see these in different orders. I noticed in CS6 that they moved what we're going to be using stroke to the top of the list. In CS4 it's at the bottom but what you're looking for is stroke, you know, like you're having a stroke. Um, we're going to set the size of our stroke to, let's say, four for now. Three is usually a pretty good default, but I want to go one up just in case. You can always change this later. We want the position of our stroke to be on the outside. You have the option of outside, inside, center. Right now we want outside. Blend mode, normal. Opacity, 100%. We want to be able to see it. Fill color. Uh, well, fill type can be either color, gradient, or pattern, the same uh, as the paint bucket tool in Photoshop. We just want it to be color, and we want that color to be black to match our inks. All right, so let's and hit OK, and that will activate on that layer. So now what we do, we take uh, the color white. You can't see it over here, but trust me, I'm using the color white. And we just do our bead work. Uh, you can use a Wacom tablet. Leave a few little gaps in there so that your stroke can fill that in. And that will make it look as though the beads or the details are slightly disconnected. Or don't, depending on what you're doing. So just go through. I like to change them up a little bit. And if you can't do a perfectly round circle, just don't use a Wacom pen. Just go use the mouse. And the mouse will just automatically do your circles real nice. <laughs> to be honest, though, at this size, uh, it's very hard to tell if something is a perfect circle or not. What, uh, meaning that when you compress the image down, it would be very hard for somebody to go, hey, 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 that doesn't look like a perfect circle, fix it, you know, so don't worry about that. So I kind of want to put some little bobbles. On this little metal piece here. Now for things that are uh, hanging straight down, for for instance, these uh, beads and decorations. I like to just go ahead, make my brush really small. You can do that with the bracket keys going back and forth. You can make it really big, really, really small. 
just uh, touch at the top, hold down shift, and pull down, and that will make a straight line. Because you can see in my sketch, you know, you're going really fast in your sketch, I didn't get that perfectly straight. Same over here, touch, then hold down shift, hold down. If you hold down shift and touch, what's going to happen is it's going to draw a line from your last point up there. So you want to touch, hold shift, pull down, just like that. All right, so then what we're going to do here is we're going to draw more beads and pretties and sparklies. We're going to be like the crow today. Not the movie actor. Like the bird who likes sparkly things. I love sparkly things. I have all this jewelry and I like barely ever wear it. I just want it. I just line my nest for when I lay my eggs. <laughs> Ew. Now I have lots of different shaped brushes and things I've made. Uh, you know, and you can go in and boop stamp that in. It, you know, just experiment. I have a chain brush. I don't know what that will do. Eh, I kind of like that. We're going to fill it in though. Uh, just like that. I have lots of different sets of brushes that I found over the years. I prefer brushes that have no copyrights on them, meaning that I could just use them for whatever I want. It just saves time and effort if you're putting a book out. You don't have to trace or track down all your brush set authors and be like, may I use this in my book? Though, I tell you what, if you're really good in Photoshop, it's pretty hard to tell what brushes you're using unless you show folks. Okay, now we're going to get a little free form here. Don't panic. I'm right here. I'm going to hold your hand through this free forming process. This character here, uh, is friends with this character who I was told is supposed to represent a swan. This has got a little swan cameo on. So I thought wouldn't it be cute if he had a, a bead or a bobble in his hair or his hairpins that was in the shape of a swan. So we're just going to do a little swan just like that. Okay, so this is not a swan. This is a big lump. We're going to fix that. Oopsie! Forgot to tell you, if you're going to erase something, you want that to be set. Uh, there's going to be a drop-down list. can't see it because I can't move my camera, but there's a drop-down list at the top, and it will say Mode, and then it will say Brush, Pencil, or Block. You want Pencil. You also don't want anything to be... <laughs> I have different opacities. I should have checked that before I started. Whoopsie doopsie. Okay, that's a little more swan like. Now let's steeple our fingers like Mr. Burns and say, Excellent. It's beautiful. Oh, and I forgot these. Come on, Emmy. Get your beads in there. All right. This one looks weird. All righty. So once you're happy, you've got your beads drawn in and everything. They're looking just fabulous. Go back out so we can see how they look. Now you're probably saying, Emmy, come on, look at these inks. They're all transparent. I should mention that my inks are not on multiply. It's just the lines. And then up here you got these beads that are white on the inside, and then they got a black border. And you're going, Emmy, fix it. And I'm going to show you how to fix it. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a new layer between your details and your inks. And on your details layer, don't worry, I'm holding your hand for this. We're going to say Control-E and that will smoosh your details layer with that stroke effect down into this new layer which we're going to rename details. Let's rename it smooshed details. Smooshed details. Okay. So now this makes 
these effects editable. See how I can erase? Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to select our magic wand tool. We're going to make sure that at the top, which you cannot see because I'm a dumb and can't move my camera up there, make sure that uh, anti-alias is unchecked, contiguous is unchecked, and sample all layers is unchecked. You want everything unchecked. And we're going to select that white. And you can see that because we've unchecked contiguous, it's selecting all the white in the picture. It says any white, I'm selecting it. And that's just what we want. And then we're going to hit delete. All right, and we're going to leave that magic wand selected. And we're going to go and do one more thing. We're going to do down heart inks. I have it locked right now, which I did with that, which means that I can't edit the ink layer. So we're going to unlock it by clicking on that little lock. And we're going to hit delete one more time and delete all the, um, the garbage inside. And we're going to hit control D to deselect. Look at that. Now we've got all this gorgeous, beautiful beadwork and details on him. He's in love with us because of it. Or maybe he's in love with that guy. I don't know. Girl, I'm going to change him. No, I'm not going to change him. Anyway, so we're going to hit Control E one more time and smoosh our details down onto our inks. So now it's all together. And now I'm probably going to color this and do a whole other video on coloring it. Okay, so I will... See you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to make sure that the in the video you can actually see the icons of the different objects. Wait, objects? What am I doing? No, of the different tools that I'm using. So if you have any questions, if something was not clear, please let me know. That's the whole point of a tutorial is that you figure this stuff out. And I will talk to you guys later.